Good evening, everybody, and welcome to The Real and the Rare here on the South Florida Tribune Broadcasting Network. My name is Scott Morgan Roth, along with the X-Man, Xavier McKnight. Glad to have you back on, Xavier. As always, Scott, it's great to be on to do The Real and the Rare and to bring people The Real and the Rare and hope they're ready for what we're dishing out in the kitchen. Well, there you go. We're going to do a lot of dishing, and we're going to start out in Ohio, and that's with the Cleveland Browns. I'll give you your few minutes there, and then I know you have a very sincere message that you want to get out there, but let's start out with the Cleveland Browns. Well, I am very much now over the Cleveland Clowns Act. Yes, I'm going to refer to them as the Cleveland Clowns in this segment, just simply because the way that they have played, the way that their quarterback is conducting himself in post-game press conferences, they they do not deserve to even own the name Clowns right now. I, I know that that's bad enough as it is, considering the recent history of this organization. But as, as far as I'm concerned right now, this is a clown show in Cleveland. I mean, this is an absolute mess right now. So let's start off with Sunday. They had a 20-6 to lead against the Seattle Seahawks on Sunday, and they looked like they were rolling. And then Baker Mayfield turned into a turnover machine. Now, it should be noted that Baker Mayfield did suffer some type of minor hip injury during that game. We can see him grimacing there a little. But that's no excuse for some of these turnovers that he made again in this game. I mean, this was some absolutely bad stuff once again. They were able to finally get Odell Beckham Jr. more involved in the offense in this game. But Jarvis Landry, as a result of that, his game was limited in this game. And surprisingly enough, Scott, Baker Mayfield had a clean pocket for most of the game. Okay. The biggest issue that we've had with the Cleveland Browns so far this year, besides Baker Mayfield and besides Freddie Kitchen, has been the lack thereof of an offensive line that they have. You can't even blame them for this performance that he had on Sunday. And then he comes out in his post-game press conference and he blames the referees and saying how we need to hold them accountable. Now, there's a point there. He's absolutely correct on that. We saw some egregious things on Sunday. We saw some more egregious things on Monday. I'm not going to get into that right now. But, you know, that does not take away from the horrendous performance that he had. Considering the fact that this team jumped out to a 20-6 to lead at home against the Seattle Seahawks, who are a good team so far in the NFL. They more than likely have the guy who I would vote NFL MVP today, Russell Wilson, right now. But that's still no excuse for this. You're coming off of a horrendous loss at San Francisco on Monday Night Football, and you go home, and you look like you're giving your fans some type of promise, and then you come out and you deliver that. There is absolutely no excuse for this. Then it doesn't help that they have the Patriots coming up next. They have a bye week this week, but after that, you have to get ready to go get ready for that storm known as New England. And we already know how it goes in New England when it's Cleveland Browns, that the organization that Bill Belichick started his head coaching right. career off with right. didn't necessarily have the best years there, but he was able to get that team to the playoffs. I don't hold 1995 against Bill Belichick because that team got off to a good start that year. And then Art Modell, the late Art Modell, God rest his soul, he dropped a bomb on that entire city saying that the Browns are coming to Baltimore. Right. The team absolutely fell apart. Belichick was fired. Most of his staff was fired. And he doesn't forget those things. He loves beating the Cleveland Browns a little more than he enjoys beating most other organizations in the league. Put him right there with the Jets for teams that he enjoys beating. Well, I say and more so. Kitchens even came out today. Freddie Kitchens even came out today and criticized Baker Mayfield a little. He kept saying that Baker has to be smarter and Baker has to make better decisions. Now, he also said that we as a coaching staff have to put him in better, de- in better situations. But he kept harping on the fact that Baker Mayfield has to make better decisions. The, the floor is yours to discuss the Cleveland Clowns. Oh, I mean, you just said it yourself. I mean, Bel- Belichick definitely has a uh, um, has a grudge against the Cleveland Browns. After all, that was his first opportunity. And when you leave an employer on such horrible terms like that, then you certainly want to prove him wrong that you went ahead and uh, you know made a mistake. In fact, I'll even take this to a different historical perspective when you talk about former Cleveland coaches. And I, and I know you can relate to this one. Chuck Daly got fired from the Cleveland Cavaliers, and how did that work out in Detroit? Well, it ended up with the Pistons having the, the best team in the 80s that would not 
not right. burn Celtics and Magic Lakers. Right. So my point is, okay, when you leave Cleveland, vindicated, free at last. No, not the Antonio Brown version of it, but free at last. So, yeah. You know, I, there's no question Belichick had some success there. Well, not, not like he had a horrible, horrible record. Was it like eight or ten games under five hundred? Wasn't that much. And he did go ahead and uh, they did okay. But you know, like any time you have a first time head coach, you're gonna learn from your mistakes and end up doing better. And I don't think anybody expected him to do this much better. But yeah, he's done all right. So I mean, you know, let's so let's look for adjectives to describe the Cle- Cleveland Browns: toxic, dysfunction. Those are a couple of things that come to mind too, and um, you know, and Freddie Kitchens just unqualified. He had no business being there, and Baker Mayfield called diarrhea of the mouth. You know, at some point or another, your actions have to speak louder than your words. And what do you have there? A situation. What are you going to do when you? Uh, uh, what are you going to do? Replace Baker Mayfield next year? I don't think so. But you know, I mean, they are what they are. They, they have. Uh, Odell Beckham was not doing very well there. Couldn't duplicate the success in Cleveland because he had a much better quarterback like Eli Manning throwing him the football. You know, and even though Odell hasn't been as boisterous in Cleveland as he uh, as he was in uh, New York, don't you think in a million years that if uh, Odell had to do it over again, I bet he probably wishes that he didn't leave New Jersey where the Giants are. But this is where he's really oh, at. Oh, oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because despite the losing ways that the New York Giants have had in recent memory, that has always been a well-run organization by right. the Morrow So, But I still think Kitchens is a one-and-done coach. I really do. I mean, anybody in their right mind that would take that job, God help me. I hope Mike McCarthy isn't stupid enough to go there. I think he certainly do a lot better. But we'll get into the coaching thing another time, but... Yeah, I you know what? Uh, what's his deal going on with Miles Garrett? Was there an incident that occurred with him? I don't even know anything about it. Yes, there was a slight incident there that occurred. I don't have the specifics of it at that time because the details have not been released. But you know, it just goes on to talk about most of the dysfunction that happens there. Because when you hear about incidents happening in other organizations, they don't necessarily get out. That's what these dysfunctional organizations have in common. Right. When they have situations that take place, all of the news seems to be able to leak out. Right. People can say what they want about the Detroit Lions, but you don't hear a lot of that dysfunction over there. If they're not doing their, well, they're not doing well, but for the most part, they run an organization which is, for the most part, free of drama compared to a lot of the other ones. Um, the only time they ever get drama when they're on the wrong end of a bad call, which unfortunately seems to be a lot in the last several years. But back to the Browns for a moment. I mean, what's there to say? I mean, you have a coach that doesn't belong there, quarterback that hits. I don't call it a sophomore jinx. I call it the fact that teams have watched him on film enough and they've figured him out. And as a result, they've made adjustments. And all he does is look to do is blame the officials and doesn't take accountability. What else can I tell you? Scott, here's what I'm going to say. I know people out there love Baker Mayfield. I know they love his story so much. But, you know, we need to come to grips with one thing. This was a two-time walk-on in college football. He was a two-time walk-on for a reason. Right. That's true. That's true. Meanwhile, all he's doing is just walking on and making excuses. Right, Xavier? Yes. And once again, you know, we talked about this earlier. We talked about this a little last week. I'm going to harp on this again. Okay. The 29 commercials, all, all of this Baker, Baker, Baker stuff that's going on, all of this front-running MVP talk that we heard before the season, enough. No, enough. He, he is not getting it done. They're not winning games, and he is a turnover machine. Right. The experiment has gone all the way wrong here right now. And John Dorsey's going to have to clean this up, but he's more than likely not going to be able to do it until after the season. Right. Yeah, but it doesn't take much, Xavier, to be a uh, celebrity in Cleveland. It doesn't. Remember, you're talking about a city there that built the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ahead of a football stadium and lost their football team. That's what you're talking about there, just so you know. Okay. So I'm not knocking Cleveland per se overly that much, but I am to an extent that, you know, if you show any sign of goodness, not greatness, 
we will definitely get endorsement deals like in the tune of 29 commercials, okay? And you'll get anything you want over there. You will. Everybody knows that Ohio is a great football state. It really is. I mean, let's think of the fact that if the Cleveland Browns even drafted nothing but Ohio State players, which a lot of times that doesn't happen, but they probably get a few, they could only be much better, although I am surprised that sometimes the Lions haven't drafted as many Wolverines as they have, although they have a little bit. But, you know, they have a good uh, plethora of talent in their backyard. But the Brown situation is what it is. It's, it, it's, you know, Cleveland is a town that's begging for some kind of a celebrity figure. They were they did it when Johnny Manziel there. They thought he was a savior. And all the other quarterbacks had followed. And look where it got him. But, I mean, I hope Baker Mayfield gets it figured out. But, boy, the way his maturity seems to be tapering off, I'm not overly optimistic that he will. But, again, you know what? Neither am I. You know, neither am I. And I don't mean to cut you off right there, but here's the last thing I'm going to say on this topic. Sure. It's very unfortunate that they're struggling the way that they are right now because we watch this week in and week out. And right now I would have to say that the AFC North has to be the worst division in the NFL right now. Right. The Steelers are struggling. The Ravens are winning games, but they don't look very impressive. If I had to put them out there against the New Englands right now and put them out there against the Kansas Cities and some of the better teams in the NFC as well, if you want to talk potential Super Bowl matchups, right. I don't believe they would favor that well. Now, Lamar Jackson is playing better, but this was my biggest concern about the Ravens all the way around. I had two big concerns. They were taking staples off that defense, staple players off that defense, and the fact that Ozzy Newsom was no longer going to be the general manager running the show there. Right. I had no doubt that they had great stability all the way around. But, you know, you're taking main staples and main faces out of the organization. You're taking glue guys out of there. Right. And when you start to take glue guys out of a place, things start to unravel a bit. I understand they traded for Marcus Peters on yesterday. That doesn't impress me. I'm not overly excited by right. that. I think he's overrated. And I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put that out there. Now, maybe him playing in a secondary with Earl Thomas and Jimmy Smith and Marlon Humphreys and those guys, maybe maybe some of his weaknesses will not be exposed as much. Right. But I'm not impressed by this move. And the Cincinnati Bengals are the Cincinnati Bengals. They are what they are. We already know what's going on there. Right. Either get Tua or get Justin Herbert or another one of these quarterbacks. We already know what that is right there. Right. So... It's very unfortunate that the Browns are not handling their business the way that some people anticipated that they would be doing so. All right. Well, again, you got, I do have confidence in Dorsey to figure it out. I really do. He's a good football man. Came from uh, the Chiefs, so I, I believe he'll get it figured out. I really do. I mean, you're talking about an organization that had Sashi Brown uh, lead it for a while. <laughs> a guy that what came from the New York Mets at one point and did their... Uh, salary cap or salary structure, but that's enough with the Browns. I've had it, so. You're not getting any more out of me on that. I think you have a subject that is far more important than the Cleveland Browns, but I but you do make a lot of valid points with the Browns. You know, Baker Mayfield, uh, they have to stick with this guy two, three, four years. They cannot continue to be in this quarterback shopping business. They can't do it no more. You gotta live with them. Yes, I absolutely agree with that. They have to live with what they made here. You know, now's not the time to decide to try to start over again. You have to try to salvage what you have, and you have to retool. Not rebuild, you need to retool around him. And even if that includes getting better offensive personnel and better coaches out there, you have to do what you have to do. But you can't keep bouncing from coach to coach either because that's not going to help his growth. We see that going on right now with Marcus Mariota in Tennessee. Well, I can tell you right now that goes back further than that. I've always been a firm believer Joey Harrington would have been a good quarterback if he had some stability, both not only in the front office but as a coach. You just can't keep moving these guys around. I expect these quarterbacks to continue to learn a new playbook. You just can't do it. And I and I and I know there's a lot of other guys I can mention, but the one that relates to me the most is I think Joey Harrington would have been a better quarterback had the Lions uh, had a. Uh, 